Ahoy there, howdy. Let's discuss Eugene Harold Krabs, the owner of the Krusty Krab. Hmm? Oh yeah, yeah. Technically, actually, Spongebob owns it as of Season 2 episode Patty Hype, though Krabs still manages the place. Most people know Mr. Krabs for his greed and money obsession, but some episodes do actually give us further insight into this older businessman. They show us who he was and that he has compassion and can actually show interest outside money, sometimes anyway. Then there's the typical drudgery episodes that turn Krabs into a despicable comic book villain. He'll joyfully steal from people, blackmail his girlfriend, and even be willing to see children hurt in order to get his stupid money. And when people's lives are less important than him making money, well, that just turns him into a one-dimensional scumbag. So let's check out the bad and the good in the five worst and best Mr. Krabs episodes. Oh, I've missed being on camera. Let's get going. For the fifth worst, Accidents will happen. Welcome to the only episode on this list where Krabs isn't the biggest jerk. While I don't have a problem with seeing Krabs get his comeuppance for being greedy or uncaring, this episode's just that old boring blackmail trope. You know, that stupid cartoon trope where a victim gets blackmailed to be the slave of another character, for the other character knows a secret about them. And every time the victim's had all they can take, well, they're threatened yet again and reminded they have no choice. And we just watch the victim's resentment build and build until they finally snap. I don't care, tell him, because I'm not even going to be here. I'm going to run away and no one will ever see me again. It's one of the most uncomfortable, stupid cartoon tropes I know of. It's like that stupid thing that wouldn't leave cartoon trope. How is watching someone foam with resentment until they finally break down ever considered a fun cartoon episode? In this case, Squidward blackmails Krabs when he has an accident in the back room. If Krabs doesn't do everything Squidward says, he'll call the Workplace Safety Committee. <laughs> So the episode just drags out as we watch Krabs do more and more unpleasant tasks slaving after Squidward. Even showing off Squidward's back barnacles. I feel like I'm gonna be sick. Ugh. It's the same stupid story happening over and over again until it turns out, of course, Squidward faked the whole thing. Faker! Not to mention you were sleeping on a job! Are they telling us that oh, Squidward's lazy? I never would have seen that coming. Next they'll be telling us that Krabs is greedy. Or maybe Spongebob likes Krabby Patties. Accidents Will Happen is a boring, tropey episode and I recommend skipping it. And for the fifth best... Growth Spout. Whenever I think back to an episode where Krabs is a father to Pearl, this tends to be the episode I think of. We can actually see in this episode he clearly has interests outside money, his daughter's safety and well-being. Surely Patrick could spare a few morsels. After all, it's for a worthy cause, me beloved Pearl. Who are you? So when Pearl suddenly has a massive growth spurt and needs to eat everything in sight, Krabs desperately runs through the town in the middle of the night, snatching food from both his employees and his girlfriend, Mrs. Puffs. There you are, sucker! Something I consider special about this episode is we actually get to see Bikini Bottom in the late night hours. As a previous night shift worker myself, I like when cartoons give us that chance to see the world in that 12am to 4am time frame. Because I personally spend a lot of my waking hours in that time, and it's nice to be reminded the world isn't just dead in that time. Well then how's about we go out for the evening, and then later on we can watch the sunrise <laughs> together. You might want to try some of these here mints. Something that stood out to me about Growth Spurt is that the dialogue is surprisingly sharp. Particularly for some of the second-rate writing we sometimes saw in Season 7, there's plenty of clever jokes and moments that caught me by surprise, even on a second watch. Like, look at this joke. I've seen it like five times and it somehow still catches me off guard. What's with the sack? I'm practicing to be Sandy Claus for the holidays. <laughs> Okay, you have a safe night now. Thanks again, officer! <laughs> also, how cute is this SpongeBob joke? It just feels so in line with his character. How 
could you do this to me? SpongeBob, I'm sorry. I had no other choice. See, I... Coming over for a slumber party without even giving me a chance to put my best PJs on. I mean, look at these things. I feel like there was a surprising amount to say about the final lines in the episode, too. As simple and cheesy as they appear. This was SpongeBob's secret ingredient in the Krabby Patty to fill Pearl up. It was love, Mr. Krabs. It was love. I mean, it's kind of a cute finish, but it also makes me think. Maybe, in reality, that's the Krusty Krab secret ingredient. It's that simple. Having a burger made by the most enthusiastic, passionate, and meticulous fast food worker in the history of the Great Barrier Reef. After all, the ending to Sponge on the Run tells us the same thing. Maybe it's been in our face the whole time. The real secret formula is sitting right here. SpongeBob SquarePants. Maybe, in reality, Plankton has just been chasing after a fast food worker who actually loves his job. Maybe the secret ingredient is just putting love and care into the burgers. The secret formula is love. Either way, Growth Spurt is a great episode for crabs. For the fourth worst, Krabby Land. It's summertime and SpongeBob's feeling the summer spirit. But apparently, so is Krabs. And SpongeBob wonders why Krabs is so happy about summer. Could it be like every other freaking Krabs episode in history and have something to do with money? You bet those trendy jeans you never use it is. You know how aggravating it is when Krabs exploits the money from adults in his restaurant? Well, what about if he started exploiting children? Cause, you know, we just liked the character too much before. Including making them sign waivers in case they get hurt. I forgot to give you these coloring book slash liability waivers! Like, how is that even remotely funny? Am I meant to be laughing because Krabs doesn't care if children get hurt? That's just despicable. Like, not even funny bad, just horrible. You see, the revolting Mr. Krabs has made a theme park out of dangerous junk in order to extort money from children. And how can we continue this stupid, horrible charade? Well, we watch SpongeBob continually get hurt in order to literally stall the audience. So the episode is literally trying to stall us while Krabs counts money. It's boring and horrible. I just don't get the appeal of this one. Bop, bop. Hey, kids. You're not Krabby the Clown. Also, I've got to point out, this is the most unrealistic group of kids ever. If SpongeBob SquarePants was entertaining a bunch of real life kids, they would be besides themselves with excitement. That'd be like the coolest thing ever to any under 10 crowd of kids. The only thing that could make that any more amazing for the kids is if Elsa magically appeared to build them a snowman and sing Let It Go. What is it, opposite day? Kids hate clowns. Adults hate clowns. People playing clowns hate clowns. No one likes clowns. It's just awful watching SpongeBob being booed and jeered by these kids. And he doesn't get any appreciation till he's actively hurting himself. What kind of messed up group of kids would get so much joy from the suffering of others? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, I guess it is normal. Well, it still annoys me. Personally, I don't like seeing people in pain. And these scenes just go on and on. Always thinking about yourself. Get out there and stall! Oh, come on. Are you sure we haven't made it clear enough yet that Krabs is a greedy, uncaring scumbag? Ugh, to me, Krabby Land is just a boring, unpleasant, annoying episode. The only funny part I found? Well, the lima beam joke is kind of funny. But that's it. And for the fourth best, Squeaky Boots. I uh, see you're still wearing them boots. This is probably a controversial pick, as some people find the squeaking annoying. But I just found the whole thing really funny. It's probably showing Krabs in one of his better lights. Through the whole thing, he comes off more as just a cheapskate rather than exploitative and cruel. And he very much reaps what he sows by the end, and even seems kind of apologetic. The story is, Pearl wants some beautiful trendy shoes for her birthday. So Krabs goes and gets her some $2 fishing boots. I spent two whole dollars on these boots and now I'm stuck with them! Where do you get fishing boots for $2 in 1999 anyway? 
That's like cheap as chips even for sandals. And obviously, since Pearl wasn't at all pleased, uh, Krabs must figure out what to do with his $2 investment. After all, that $2 could have bought him like one tenth of a haircut. So Krabs manages to convince SpongeBob to give up his paycheck for these incredibly valuable boots. And what if I paint the Krusty Krab for free? You're gonna do And I'll throw in a year's supply of French fry oil. You're gonna <laughs> put it on there, lad! You're gonna give me a heart attack. Krabs is overjoyed, but as he deserves, these squeaking boots will come back to haunt him. For you see, these boots make a very distinct, unique sound. I can still hear it! In fact, Krabs is haunted by dreams of the boots. Mysterious squeaks suddenly emanate from his home. That was the worst night I ever weathered. What's nice about this episode is we don't have to watch Krabs be a scumbag for the whole thing before finally getting what he deserves. He's simply being a cheapskate and cons Spongebob into something relatively harmless. And then we're just watching him pay for his cheapness the rest of the episode, and it's really satisfying. A part I distinctly remember is when he has a full-on breakdown and just outright eats the boots. And I like the little bonus that in the end, Spongy gets his paycheck back. The only catch to this episode is more of a personal taste one. If you're particularly sensitive to high-pitched noises, this one might bother you a little. That squeaking is gonna drive us all crazy! That being said, I have really sensitive hearing and I personally could tolerate it for a really funny episode. <laughs> for the third worst? Mutiny on the Krusty. So many of these bad Krabs episodes seem determined to make us hate Krabs. This is another case of him being more greedy and obnoxious than ever. We start the episode with Krabs outright stealing money from the bag of a woman, charming, and forcing customers to stay in his restaurant till they've spent every piece of money they have. Get back in there and spend the rest of your money! But I needed it for rent! Then, because he's just so charming, he then refuses to pay his employees on payday. Payday's been cancelled! I don't think it's clear enough to us yet that Krabs is cheap. By the two minute mark, it has become abundantly clear this is gonna be an ugly slog of a Krabs episode. And as if Krabs at his worst wasn't enough, so much of this episode is just killing time. And it's a shame because the story concept sounds pretty good. The Krusty Krab and some customers get caught in a typhoon and sent flying away to unknown lands. But it's almost an achievement how boring they make such a fun premise. To start with, there's not a single change of scenery here. It's set entirely in the Krusty Krab with not a single good joke. And nothing but dull, awful dialogue. New star policy! All money brought into this store must be spent here! The story just hums and haws around without committing to anything. In one moment, the customers are forming a mutiny to make Squidward captain? Then they just as suddenly form a mutiny to make Krabs captain again? What? Then for some reason Krabs wants the customers to beg him to save them? <laughs> This episode's writing just doesn't have a lick of effort to it. The episode also highlights what I consider SpongeBob's worst trait. I call it Spineless Bob. The SpongeBob that is so single-mindedly devout to serving Krabs that he's willing to let other people be hurt in order to abide to Krabs' will. Particularly in mid-season, SpongeBob will have this almost cult-like devotion to Krabs, even when Krabs is legitimately hurting people. And I think that's just awful. This unquestioning devotion to Krabs comes off as mindless and just outright spineless. Though fortunately, early and late season Spongebob has a bit more of that common sense, and he's more interested in helping people than religiously serving the often malicious Krabs. Take Spongebob in season two episode Patty Hype. Krabs and Squid would mock him for his pretty patty idea, but Spongebob thinks this idea could make a lot of customers happy, so he stands his ground and makes a restaurant. And because of that episode, he technically owns the Krusty Krab. While the mid-season spineless Bob probably would have said, yes, this was a stupid idea. What was I thinking? You're amazing, Mr. Krabs. I know this is a good idea. I'll show you! Anyway, back to the episode. A monster's attacking, but there's no tension because we first have to watch Krabs come back and then refuse to help the people for some reason, slowly demanding that customers beg and plead for them to help him. Oh boy, I'm so glad this jerk came back to save the day. Is there really that much of an audience for watching obnoxious, self-centered, greedy, bad guys win? 
Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't miss 2016 either. Anyway, moving on. There's just no structure to this episode. SpongeBob spineless, crabs is annoying. I'd recommend giving this one a skip. And for the third best, one Crabs is Trash. This one was a toss up between Safe Deposit Crabs and this. I wanted to include Safe Deposit Crabs because it was an example of a pretty good season 9 episode. But in the end, the jokes in One Crabs Trash just had me laughing so much, I had to choose this. Like, one of my favorite jokes is this spooky scene. Oh my gosh! A floating shopping list! <laughs> In a nutshell, Crab sells Spongebob a thrown away hat that honestly looks downright fantastic on. Though Crab soon discovers that it actually is a million dollar hat, and he has to somehow convince Spongebob to give it back. It's just really hard for mid-season Spongebob to match this early season writing. The way Krabs continually talks himself into a corner with Spongebob. The way Krabs' greed always backfires on him. The way he just continually sets himself up for disaster. Or that great attention to detail, like the atmosphere in this cemetery scene. There's even a brilliant scene where Krabs literally fights off an army of the dead. The whole kit and caboodle really forms into a memorable, funny, exciting episode. And on a personal note, I kind of wish Spongebob had kept this hat to wear on occasion. Having this cute, colourful number one cap just suits him all over. It even helped his bubble blowing, one of his favourite hobbies. It's a shame he didn't just pick up another one from the trash at the end. I guess then he could call himself Spongebob One Hat. And the second worst Crabs episode is... The Scent of Money! So, it turns out that, shocker, Krabs likes money. Hello, I like money. And it just so happens that Gary can mysteriously attract money in this episode. He swallowed a fridge magnet, let's not judge him. The whole process causes Gary great discomfort. I could never do that to him. I could. I bet you could, Krabs, I bet you could. Who cares if you're hurting your most loyal employee's pet? Gotta get them quarters. So apparently, Spongebob is so blind in this episode when working, he doesn't even notice Krabs using Gary to actively steal money from the bags of customers. Hey, what are you doing with my change? Your change? Anything on the floor be fair game. And I gotta ask, why does no one call the cops on this guy? FBI, open up Krabs. And then, because apparently the episode was getting too classy, we then have to look at Krabs' money-covered rear end. Ew. Looks like I need pockets for me pockets. But apparently the customers are just going to leave in a tiff rather than, you know, calling the cops that are so strict that they will jail people for littering. But clearly I just like crabs too much. What if he next refuses to let go of Gary and overworks SpongeBob endlessly while using Gary to steal money? But you know the worst part of all this? This episode's just boring. By the three minute mark, I was well and truly over watching Krabs play metal detector and steal money from people. It wasn't really that funny to begin with. And also, why is Bikini Bottom suddenly so spineless? This guy is walking up to them and directly stealing money from their pockets. Where's my change? <laughs> Well, that stinks. Eventually, some people kind of catch on to the fact that Krabs is robbing them blind and doing it right in front of their faces. But why is it taking the majority of the episode for people to react to this? You're on to us. Time for plan B. And last of all, why is SpongeBob so ridiculously thick-headed here? If there's one thing we can say about SpongeBob, it's that he's generally pretty sensitive to his pet's needs. So why is he able to look Gary straight in the eye and not realize he's being worked to exhaustion? Some people think Krabs gets his comeuppance in the end by having to use the $2,000 he made to pay for his medical bills. But to me, that doesn't fully feel like comeuppance. Because he's back at square one as though he didn't rob the entire town blind. For some reason, he just got to keep the money and go to hospital? While Mrs. Puffs goes to jail for seven years for littering? But more on that later. This is one of the most infamous Krabs episodes, and rightfully so. Thank you for your money! And I think the second best Krabs episode is... Krusty Love. Okay, first off, let's get one of the best jokes in the episode out of the way. Scrumptious, curvy cutie. I see her, Mr. Krabs. A Krabby Patty with cheese. The classic. <laughs> 
Anyway, this remains one of the sweetest episodes in the series. I can't help it. When I watch this one, I get a bit of a grin on my face. It's so sweet. I really like Krabs' betrayal in this episode, because he suddenly goes from a one-track greedy villain to just an older man looking for a date. It's so relatable. It's like he's actually alive and attracted to other people. Or Pufferfish. In this case, he's caught by the beauty of Mrs. Puff. We learn so much about crabs in this episode that I've never forgotten it, even though I haven't watched this one for like a decade. We learn crabs can actually go on a date, be a nice guy, chivalrous, and have a good time. You're spoiling me, Mr. Krabs. I mean, foot rubs between courses, caricatures. And we learn that in this episode anyway, he treats his partner with respect and care. Nothing's too good for you, my prickly peach. In fact, he wants to treat Mrs. Puffs at the expense of what I thought was the most important thing to him. Money. Who would I wouldn't give to have a lass like that on me claw? There's no massive conflict or stakes going on here. For the first time, we're just seeing crabs do something not related to money, go on a date. And it's really compelling the whole way through. I want to see their date go well, and I'm really pleased for Mr. Krabs. He's showing he has interest beyond the superficial thrills of excess wealth. This basically changed the ball game for Krabs. It was hard to imagine that until this episode. And I don't mean to harp on, but it's just so nice to see Mrs. Puffs being treated well. But at the same time, it's not just a complete character flip for Krabs, but it's also realistic to his character because Krabs finds himself in conflict on whether to spend money on Mrs. Puffs or to hold on to his wealth. I'm caught in the middle of me two great loves. Sweet Mrs. Puff and the rest of me money. For a while, it looks like Mr. Krabs has completely botched the date. But by the end, it becomes clear that Mrs. Puffs is pretty smitten with Krabs. You're a very sweet man, Mr. Krabs. <laughs> Fun fact, in the episode Whirly Brains, it's revealed that these two have been secretly dating for 16 years. And that has to be one of the sweetest things I've seen in this show. I'd rather go Dutch, if you don't mind. Okay. And before we get to the number ones, let's go through some quick honorable mentions. Pull up a barrel. This definitely takes the cake for one of the most interesting insights into Krabs' history. But since I discussed it before in the worst and best modern Spongebob episodes, I decided to leave it off the list. Basically, if you want a colorful story on Krabs' history in the Navy, this is the episode you'll get it in. A storm like this puts me in the mind of me old Navy days. Old Navy days? Patty Hunt. This is another really good early season episode, though I was more on the fence with this one if it was more of a Spongebob episode or a Krabs episode. Either way, most people know seasons one to three are chock full of good episodes. Hold on me bucko, food's on the way! Hey, you got money, right? Yeah. Midlife Crustacean. This is another of my favorites. It's got a very memorable and unique message on how important it is to have a hobby and how overrated it can be to do nothing. But I already discussed it in great detail in darker Spongebob episodes, so I left it off the list. Do you think I'm old? Well, of course I do, but that's okay. Arg. No, 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 I, I didn't stub my toe again. It's just the name of the episode. Thanks, Luke. I think this would be a sixth best for me personally. But once again, I left it off the list because it's an early season episode and I wanted to try and offer you some quality between the seasons. As you know, later SpongeBob seasons often have a reputation for being lousy, and that's simply not always true. Basically, SpongeBob, Patrick, and Krabs have a pirate adventure sailing under the seven seas in order to find the Flying Dutchman's treasure. And you can bet the Dutchman will be dropping in on their adventure too. Definitely a memorable early season Krabs episode. We're gonna be pirates! Hey, hey, really? That's skipping. Pirates don't skip. As for the dishonorable mentions, well, I'm crazy to not mention this one. One Course Meal. I know, I know, it's an obvious choice for the number one worst, but it's been talked about to death and once again, I'd like to give you as much variety as possible. If you are curious of my thoughts on it though, I discussed it many years back in the six worst Spongebob episodes. Anyway, on to the number ones. And for the number one worst Krabs episode, or at least the one that annoyed me the most, Summer Job. You know what I don't miss? Mrs. Puff torture episodes. Yet to top it off, this is also Krabs at his absolute worst. It would be a crying shame to a certain someone if this information were to leak out to the authorities. Not only is he blackmailing his girlfriend, but he's forcing her into slave labor at the same time. <gasps> 
be filling in for Squidward. Next to maybe one course meal, this is definitely among the nastiest crabs has ever been. And I don't need to explain what happens when you start losing your regularity, do I? Why would we want to see Mrs. Puff suffer in silence as she's made into a slave by crabs and hushed through threats of going to jail? Basically, Mrs. Puff tries to escape SpongeBob as he fights tooth and nail to give her a note, which whacks her in the face and sends her crashing into Krusty Krab. Unsurprisingly, the poor thing has crashed before, almost certainly while teaching SpongeBob, and she worries that the cops will put her away for life this time. But Krab says he'll keep her secret if she'll work for free at the Krusty Krab. What a freaking charmer boyfriend. I think we can work something out. Huh? So many bad tropes are covered in this episode. We already did this and accidents will happen and it was just as unfunny there. Krabs is awful and SpongeBob is just to top it off at his most annoying. Poor Puffs is made to constantly suffer in quiet and the story is drab and done before. We watch SpongeBob smugly repeat everything he learned from Mrs. Puffs to her as he teaches her the restaurant because now he's the teacher and it just painfully drags on like this. You're not taking notes? Always remember, good grades only follow diligent notes. We just watch Mrs. Puffs get more and more annoyed as SpongeBob continually speaks down to her and humiliates her. I'm so glad we've moved past this stupid withholding resentment trope in modern SpongeBob episodes, because it got old really quickly. Thank you. Good job, Mrs. Puff. Now all that's left is to submit the order to the cook. It's not even just a bore. It's an annoying bore. It's ambivalence. The more I watch, the more bored and infuriated I get at the same time. And the second Mrs. Puff expresses any frustration, she's reminded by Krabs that she's working as a slave under blackmail. By the five minute mark, it was so under my skin, I wanted to rage quit this episode. But finally, Mrs. Puffs has had all she can of being humiliated and leaves. Only for her to be thrown in jail for littering. You littered. And now you're going to the stony lonesome. Littered? And given seven years. 2,528 to go. Oh, that's just shy of four years without SpongeBob. I know she says four years in the episode, but she also says 2,529 days, which is just short of seven years. But even better, she takes driving education classes from SpongeBob the whole time. And we have to watch her scream in horror as she's forced into her seat by police. Oh, wow, that's bad. How is SpongeBob even a driving teacher when he can't drive? It's like the most well-known fact of the show. This isn't only the worst Krabs episode to me, it's also what I consider one of the worst SpongeBob episodes. I hadn't seen this one before and it's among the worst for me. It's so, so horrible and painful to watch. And I think the number one best Krabs episode is... In a world where a sea sponge can live in a pineapple under the sea, snails act like cats, and squirrels are scientists, there is one question that remains unanswered to this very day. Is Krabs secretly a robot? Well, Spongy suspects so. Why was Mr. Krabs making all those beeping sounds? Could it be that he's a robot? This one is at number one purely for its great structure, perfect timing, and laughs. I laugh so much at these jokes. I surrender! Oh. The setup is just so funny and ridiculous, and it tells us so much about SpongeBob's inner workings in his mind. Firstly, I can really relate to SpongeBob here. It doesn't surprise me that he doesn't take scary movies well, as he has a very vivid imagination. I can just relate so much, I hate scary movies as well. And watching Spongy's imagination get the better of him, as he starts to wonder if everyone is a robot, is both relatable and funny. I suspect many of us have been that younger person, or even a adult who've seen that scary movie and wondered, could that happen in real life? Is it truly a movie or is there really supernatural forces and sentient robots? Nah. Also, this right here remains one of my favorite scenes in the series. It's just so random to see Krabs on his desk doing the robot without batting an eyelid. And I think many of us can relate to getting that catchy song stuck in your head that you just can't get enough of. I mean, what is Spongy meant to be thinking when he sees this? <laughs> 
And somehow this crazy set of coincidences just keeps happening and eventually convinces SpongeBob that Krabs is in fact a robot. And they just up the ante on this because by the end, SpongeBob has managed to convince Squidward that Krabs is a robot, leading to them evacuating the customers and announcing the robot apocalypse. What's also great is this is one of the best SpongeBob and Squidward team ups in the series. It's right up there with pizza delivery. Look, I told you, little friend, I ain't paying for that. Well, this one's on the. We even get to watch these two interrogate robot crabs in their team up. What? You think I'm a robot? We don't think, we know. It just keeps getting better. But there is one thing that didn't make sense that drove me mad. Why couldn't the 11 year old get into the pirate movie? Why? It was rated R. <laughs> that joke was awesome. How come SpongeBob and Krabs don't laugh at this joke? It was rated R. I'm definitely going to use it again myself. There's also a great message to this episode about not letting our paranoia and imaginations get the best of us. And sadly, that's one message that I think is going to remain relevant for a while yet. Anyway, this is by far my favorite Krabs episode. With just the aid of SpongeBob's vivid imagination in the Krusty Krab, they managed to make an unpredictable, exciting, hilarious episode. There you go. Enjoy your. Say, so you're not a robot, are you? You know, as a character, Krabs always strikes me as having potential. We see occasional insights of him being a clever, complex, ex Navy father figure to SpongeBob, tutoring him in the ways of the fast food industry. But sadly, we mainly just see hints of this character. And in mid seasons, we're mostly just left with a one dimensional cash criminal. But that being said, he can be a great foil to SpongeBob's good nature when he's used right. And he's certainly a good reminder to kids of the limited value of shallow excess money. Anyway, if you have your own thoughts on these episodes or think I missed any, feel free to leave your own thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.